Newton's method aims at solving the equation f of x equals 0, where f is a differentiable function. The method itself is quite simple, but the idea behind it is a beautiful application of derivatives. So let me show you what the method consists of on this example. First, I'll show you graphically. So let's look at the graph of a function, of our function, and we are looking for the points where f of x becomes 0. So those are the points where the graph crosses the x-axis. Let's just focus on this uh, solution, how this route, uh, we are aiming to find that. The method consists of first just guessing a solution, that, that would be our initial guess approximation to the solution, x1, and then looking at the corresponding point on the graph of the function, we draw the tangent line to the graph at that point and see where it crosses the x-axis. That would be the point x2 and this would be our next approximation to the solution. Then we could iterate this process and this way get better and better approximations to uh, the solution. So again, the method consists of first uh, taking an initial guess, x1, and then finding where the tangent line to the graph of the function at the corresponding point crosses the x-axis, and that means taking the equation of the tangent line, setting y to 0 and solving for x which we can do if the slope of the tangent line at x1, f prime of x1, is not zero. We get the solution x2, that is x1 minus f of x1 over f prime of x1. Uh, this x2 can serve as our new starting point, and then we can repeat the process, iterate it to get a sequence of approximations, x1, x2, x3, and so on, where the m plus first um, term in the sequence, the n plus first approximation, xn plus 1, would be xn minus f of xn divided by f prime of xn, provided that all of these derivatives in the denominator do not vanish, are not zero. So Newton's method does not always work, it requires that the derivatives at the approximations do not vanish, but even when we get close to zero in the de uh, denominator, you can imagine how it takes us far from the actual solution, maybe even outside of the domain of the function for our next approximation. So one has to be careful when applying Newton's method. Now, but if the function is nice enough, it works really well. Let me show you an example of, of that. Let's consider the function f of x equals x squared minus 2. And we are looking for the places where uh, that becomes 0. Well, from simple algebra, we know that uh, x squared minus 2 equals 0 means that x needs to be plus or minus the square root of 2. Let's look for the positive solution, the square root of 2 that is. If we simply apply the formula, then we get the f x n plus 1 be x n minus f of x n, that is x n squared minus 2, divided by f prime of x n, which is 2 x n. Simplifying that expression gives us uh, a half times x n plus 2 over x n. And then we just need to have an initial guess. Again, we are looking for root 2, so I will go with a really bad initial approximation of x1 equals 1. And here I give you the decimal uh, expansion of root 2 up to some decimals. Now, what is the next approximation using this formula? x2 becomes 1.5. With the yellow digit, I indicate the first digit that is not correct in the expansion. So x uh, 2 already uh, uh, fails at the first decimal place. What about x3? Well, it, it works better. There we have two decimal places correct. What about x4? Even more, now five decimal places correct. What about x5? Even more decimal places correct. So you can see how um, practically at each uh, approximation successive approximation, the, the number of correct decimal places seems to double at least. So this is quite a powerful method. Let's look, look at another example of Newton's method. Use Newton's method to find the cube root of 2 correct to 8 decimal places. So post the video and input your answer in the box. Hope you paused it and have found this number. Well, one way to use Newton's method would be to come up with a function which vanishes at the cube root of 2 and one function that does that would be x cubed minus 2 which becomes 0 exactly when x is equal to the cube root of 2. Now the derivative of this function is uh, 3x squared 
and uh, Newton's method tells us that the n plus first term in the approximation would be the nth term minus the function evaluated at the nth term divided by the derivative evaluated at the nth term. So we get for xn plus 1, xn minus xn cubed minus 2 divided by 3 times xn squared. And then we, all we need is an initial guess for the cube root of 2, and I will go with the best, really bad guess of x1 equals 1. And then if you calculate the consecutive uh, terms in the approximation, you will get a sequence of numbers, and it is at the 6th and 7th term that you will notice that the decimal places in the first um, the decimals in the first eight places will not change anymore so those are the correct decimals for the cube root of two i hope you enjoyed this video and i'll see you in the next one